Salter Oak Galera, you're all very welcome this morning. Thank you all for taking the time to come to this seminar online today. We're very, very grateful. I know how busy everyone is right now. Just before we get underway, and I'm conscious of the time, a couple of housekeeping points. First of all, I hope everyone has received the delegate etiquette guidelines, and we'd ask everyone please to adhere to those during the day. A um, couple of things in particular I want to point out. The sessions are being recorded, so you should be aware of that. And um, we will, from time to time, for social media and other purposes, be taking screenshots. So please, again, be aware of that. And if you'd rather not feature them, you can simply turn off your camera or change, uh, uh, you know, anonymize your name and so on, on on your screen. The last thing is very important because I think one thing we miss about these kind of events in, in, in person, if you like, is the whole uh, coffee break experience. So please remember coffee break time when you're put into your break rooms to do have a chat with each other. We got some feedback after the last seminar that people weren't sure, you know, who was supposed to take the lead or whatever. It is a coffee break. Please take a, take, take a moment just to, 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 to chat with your colleagues or, of course, take, take a second to grab a cup of coffee as well. So without further ado, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our first speaker, uh, Professor Philip Nolan, President of Maynooth University and Chair of NEFIT's Epidemiological Modelling um, Working Group, to officially open today's seminar and to welcome you to today's event. So thank you very much, Philip. because it's an opportunity for me to say thank you uh, uh, to, the, to the profession of librarianship and to you as, as colleagues. Um, I know things are really hard uh, for, for you um, uh, and, and for all of us at, at present, um, this opportunity then to come together and to meet colleagues, even though it is um, uh, quite a strange way to meet, even though we're, we're 10, 11, 12 months into it this way now. Um, and, you know, as the proverb I just quoted says, what's, what's rare is wonderful. So the, the, the opportunity to get together, even in this virtual environment, uh, is wonderful in part because of its unusual nature, um, as well as the challenges that unusual nature creates. As a, as a scientist and as an academic, uh, I really know how important uh, conferences and seminars are to our professional life. They're typically very joyful occasions. You can mix um, professional business with, with, with pleasure of meeting people that sometimes you see regularly, but not, not in such a social or discursive environment and others that you, that you see more rarely. So, uh, learning about new discoveries and new ways of doing things is, is important in any profession, as is catching up with colleagues older than you. And I know, and I know very vividly because I know Carl was so excited about it that in August 2020, uh, the Irish Library community was due to host the IFLA World Library and Information Congress. And this would have been around 4,000 librarians from all over the world traveling here to experience our Cadian and the culture. Uh, to see our beautiful country, but more importantly, uh, to see uh, the contribution that, that Irish librarians and, and, and the Irish profession uh, is making to, to our system of higher education. Uh, to show the, the, the library world and literally the world uh, of librarianship and um, uh, what an extraordinary job we do in this country. Uh, due to our, our current uh, living and working arrangements, uh, events like today's have taken on a significance that goes beyond the professional and I congratulate the Library of the Maynooth University uh, for organizing it. Um, uh, I, I'll say something at the end but, but from my perspective as the president of one university, which is, is some, a job I still try and give some attention to, <laughs> almost in my spare time. Uh, the the uh, Carl and his staff uh, have done an extraordinary job uh, in, in uh, keeping 
learning and research going uh, in extraordinary challenging circumstances. Uh, the library was always valued by uh, colleagues in the link, but even more so uh, in the last 10 months, given what today's done. Um, this is the second uh, MU Library seminar to give the Irish community an opportunity to share experiences and learning from the pandemic and crucially to catch up on network. The first was in May 2020, and uh, as Carl has already alluded to, it was a great success, but also feedback and, and learning has been taken from that. Uh, that was an opportunity for you to draw breath. Um, those first few months were really quite extraordinary. Um, we literally didn't know what hit us in, in, in so many senses of that word. And it was an opportunity for you to assess library's response to what has transpired to be uh, the early months of the crisis. Um, I imagine a few of you who attended on that day, and even those of us very close to it, we expected a very different end to 2020 and a very different beginning to 2021. I, I don't think you imagined you'd be living in, as I say, neither to what, really, nine months later, that there'd be another, um, that we would be where we are, and that there would be another conference, uh, another seminar with the topic for discussion being living in COVID. And it's probably a pause for reflection. I, uh, I, I, we have plenty of um, reason to be optimistic. Uh, next Christmas will be very much like a normal Christmas, I think. Uh, but we're likely with a combination of climate change, and in particular, I think, driven by climate change, and um, uh, the emergence of future pandemics largely driven by climate change. There are two very tightly coupled problems uh, and the solutions are very similar. We're likely to face disruption of this kind from time to time for the rest of our professional lives, escalating. Uh, and I don't mean that to be a pessimistic perspective. Uh, I, I mean that to, uh, there's, a, there's a kind of recurrent theme for me, I'm terribly worried um, that things will improve and we will collectively forget all of the things that we learned over the last two months. So uh, we have plenty of reason to be optimistic, but I think the fact that we are here unexpectedly today, still in the middle of this crisis, um, and, and in the middle of probably the worst period of this crisis, um, uh, and even though it's the worst period of this crisis, there's kind of a cognitive distance, but we've got used to it, so is it really that bad at all? Um, uh, Optimistic for its end, but also concerned that we may fail to learn the lessons that, that 2020 has taught us. So, I want to take the opportunity to thank you for the important and valuable work of libraries in responding to this pandemic. Um, I think uh, we've we've learned what, what what we've learned what's important and a lot, many things in in our society that may have been less obvious or hidden have come into closer light. This was rightly recognized from the early days of Ireland's response when, on March 17th, uh, Ben Fieshek, uh during his address to the nation, specifically identified librarians and many people who have joined the quote, great national effort, end quote. I'm aware that since then, you, like so many in Ireland and around the world, have been on a roller coaster of adapting services, planning for what you think things might be like in three months' time and finding that they're not like what you anticipated. Um, and taking on new roles, closing physical access, opening it, closing it again, and of course providing thousands of resources and services online. Access to libraries has been vital for many in our community uh, during this difficult time. And I, I, we, we always knew um, uh, that library staff, staff were, were on the front line and that's a that's an identity we should wear with pride on the front line of our interaction with, with students, with researchers, particularly on the front line of our interaction with vulnerable students um, or inexperienced students, or, or however one might like to put it, uh, never more so than at present. Um, so in addition to supporting the traditional needs of students and learners, library resources are vital for those who are cocooning, who are self-isolating, and, and those suffering with COVID-19. So right now, and at other stages during our response, library content has been essential for families who are homeschooling or emergency educating, I think is, is the word I've heard and much more, a much more graphic descriptor of what homeschooling is really like, um, or just looking for something to do. Um, and I think it's important to say that the services that your profession offers 
may be the bright moment in a very difficult day. Uh, and, and neither you nor, nor the person on the other side of the interaction may fully appreciate uh, how important that moment in that day uh, is to that individual. Um, so I know that many of these services have been provided uh, often at short notice, with few resources in innovative ways. Uh, in less than a year, you've introduced us to such delights as online story time, virtual book clubs, digital cafes. On top of that, you've been working to ensure future generations will be able to learn about these times. Uh, and that's, that, that brings me back to that concept of it's, it's so important that we remember, that we curate, that we collect. Uh, that we archive uh, uh, and that we have a resource to, to reflect upon what's happened so that we may learn from it into the future. Uh, the creation of COVID-19 related archives and exhibitions is therefore another really important example of the way in which you've applied your um, uh, professional capacities and, and traditional values in new ways, uh, even when the subject matter is uncomfortably contemporary and at times feeling distressing. So, so genuinely, thank you. And uh, 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 thank you is genuine because I've really experienced it in my own institution and I know the experience with my, within my own institution is replicated in so many other institutions across the country and across all, uh, all parts of the library profession and all aspects of the library profession. Uh, in our commitment to knowledge, to learning, to research, to innovation, and, and above all, to service. Um, uh, it, it's, I think we've really come to value service uh, in, in the course of, of the last 10 months. But of course, in the face of this terrible disease, libraries have gone far beyond what might be described as its traditional role based on content and on services. Um, libraries, and I'm again vividly aware of this, have assisted the health sector through the donation of equipment to hospitals production of 3D printed facials. Libraries have taken on new roles to support national response, including contact tracing, the provision of community support helplines to help those who are vulnerable and, and isolated. Um, and it's very, that's very conscious in the mind of public health. We're hearing a, a great deal about hospital and intensive care at the moment. Um, uh, we would be very conscious of the importance of that uh, to, to those very significant numbers of people uh, but the equal importance of services to the uh, tens of thousands of isolated and, and, and vulnerable um, out there and how do you play the critical role in that. So I know that these um, difficult and demanding roles have tested and stretched you. In academia we often say, and um, I, I say it, that libraries are at the heart of our institutions. Um, uh, I, I think in the last 10 months you, you demonstrated again that libraries are, in, are at the heart of our community. So, so thank you, it's greatly appreciated. I do hope you enjoyed today's seminar. Uh, when I looked at the programme, I was really struck by the diversity of it, both in terms of the types of libraries represented. And if, if my comments have been too focused on, on university libraries, forgive me. Um, we're always um, biased towards our own experience. Um, though you, you will be pleased to hear that I'm also a member of my local library, prin principally for its film collection. Um, uh, um, I tend to, to buy my own books because I'm that kind of person. Uh, but, but I'm aware of, of the importance to me of the library in my community, um, as well as the library uh, in my university. Uh, the papers and the posters tell the tale of libraries both in getting on with business during extraordinary times and rising to the challenge of new roles uh, as they lift the pandemic. I, I want in particular to thank that diverse and committed uh, group of speakers and poster presenters who responded to the call. Uh, your professional generosity and commitment at these difficult times demonstrates all that is good um, uh, in the library sector. And I really do hope you enjoy this opportunity. We, we ourselves had a, a morning seminar of my senior management team yesterday, and it felt like a, an intrusion on my time. I was busy, uh, but it turned out to be a really valuable morning of kind of reflection and uh, talking. Um, so I, I hope you have the same experience uh, here today. I look forward to a time in the, in the not too distant future when we welcome you back physically to the um, environment that's so, so graphically illustrated. Uh, behind me. Until then, uh, I want to thank you once more for what you've done, 
Um, and really thank you for your public service and the work you've done uh, to keep yourselves, our students, our academics and our communities uh, safe. And I, I just want to conclude by, by asking you um, when this is over and when, when we've recovered uh, and, and paid our, our bodies and our minds back for what we've asked of them uh, in the course of the pandemic. I'd, I'd also ask you to join me, and, and it's a, your profession is so well placed to do it, uh, to, to join us in a collective effort of uh, reflecting, remembering, learning, advocating, uh, all of the things that we need to do uh, to make sure that we, that we respond as a global community to what has happened over the last uh, uh, 10 months and what will continue for, for another 10, I'm sorry to say, to, to, to read, read the signal that the earth is sending us and collectively deploy our, our professional experience and resource to confronting that very difficult problem. Because um, uh, I have a real fear that we may return to our comfort zones um, only to be surprised or shocked again uh, at some point in the course of the next decade. So I really hope you enjoy the morning. Thank you so much indeed for all that, that you've done. And if I may say, and I apologize in one sense for saying a particular thanks uh, to my own colleagues in the Lincoln University because we've had it as difficult as everybody else and they've made it really considerably easy. Thank you very much indeed for my today. Thank you very much, uh, Philip. We really appreciate those kind words and that wonderful uh, opening address and welcome. You might, I don't know, you probably didn't have the opportunity as you were speaking, there's some lovely comments in the chat where people are just generally expressing their gratitude to you for all that you have done um, in your role, both in Middle University, uh, but also particularly, obviously, in Neffet and the never ending uh, slog it's been, I'm sure, for you since last March. So on all our behalf, um, we just want to tell you how grateful that we are. We are. Um, I know you're incredibly busy, so I expect you're going to leave us now. Um, so thank you very much for, your, for, for coming along this morning. And um, unless there's anything else you want to say, we're going to we'll move on then to our next speaker. I'm going to say two things. Um, I, I, I'm going to turn off my video and listen in for a while, if I may. Um, uh, and the second thing is I, I do really appreciate the comments, um, irrespective of kind of power hierarchies or however one might think about these every now and then Kyle will send me a text of encouragement and it is a hard slog so the texts of encouragement are much appreciated uh, and, and I did see it in the chat and I honestly say it's very much appreciated thank you for those kind comments thank you very much okay so now our next speaker is Jane Burns who I just noticed yesterday Jane in your Twitter profile you have another new job title you're now director of uh, the Regional University Network, but you're also, are you still an assistant registrar at AIT as well? well um, I, it actually was the switch over, yes, uh, on Monday. So I'm the, the new director of the Regional University Network Project, but I'm also involved in the Technological University Project as well. Okay, and you'll see Jane's full profile uh, on the program uh, information in, in the Eventbrite. But M Jane will, of course, be very well known to most of you for all of her wonderful work in libraries over the many years. And now I'm going to hand over to Jane to deliver our keynote address. Jane. Okay, let me get my slides up. Good morning, everybody. And thank you to Kaha McCauley and um, my colleagues at Maynooth University for inviting me to give the keynote today. Like many of you, I was fortunate to attend the Irish Libraries and COVID-19 First Reflection Seminar hosted by Maynooth back in May. I was as impressed then as I am now looking at the lineup of speakers and posters from our library world, exploring the ways that libraries are engaging in the COVID reality. In particular, I have been reflecting on the presentation from Alan Carberry from UCC, where he talked about how we were pivoting into this new online library world. That shift seems so very far away. And even more than pivoted, we have been shot into space, into an unknown, and in some cases, a terrifying place that we could never have imagined nine months ago. Back then and now and all the space in between, we have sought each other individually and collectively 
for support and guidance and empowerment and even a good old cry. For all the challenges and hardships that we have faced, this time of a global pause did a few positive things. For many people, including myself, we got to experiment with new and interesting hairdos. We had a re-engagement with hobbies like rock painting that spoke to our creative sides, which usually get neglected when we are busy. We got to know our local areas better. I found new walks and new shortcuts, and I never realized how many dogs live in Dunboyne. But I think the most important, most importantly, what is the main theme of my keynote today is the global trauma, the global pandemic, and the global tragedy has provided time to reflect and perhaps to engage or re-engage with our personal lives and in our professions, and to think about different ways of how things can change for the better in order to refocus our energy. For the users of our libraries, they look to us as anchors of their organizations. And often on campuses, they were the only physical space open. Our public libraries were moved into the roles of community support centers and seen by government departments nationally as routes to drive policy and messaging that supported, supported communities throughout Ireland. Many of the public libraries were heavily involved in the community call support helplines. Public library services became so vital for so many people for their mental health and well being, and they continue to be a lifeline. In education settings, the library's role was even more enhanced as the third space, the link between home and the educational settings. Collectively, libraries moved very quickly to online solutions and provided support throughout all of our communities. In some cases, library staff were classified as essential. But this classification comes with risk and concerns and some challenges. A little over a year ago, my colleagues at AIT started using Teams. And initially, I was so resistant. I just thought, oh, this is another email system I have to deal with and manage. But very quickly, this became our primary mode of conducting business. And I was forced to see the benefits of it as a working tool. And options like Zoom have made seminars and conferences possible across the globe without travel time or expense, but I am of course missing all of the conference loot. Necessity forced the reality of digital strategy, digital delivery to fruition. Online teaching and learning had nowhere else to go and resistance to online usage changed. This ultimate move online to online provided insights into the blended approach of teaching and learning, networking, meetings, and personal interactions. And I think we all need studios like this one visualized. We are all aware of the perceptions and the stereotypes that many people external to our profession hold. And well, at this point, I just ignore it and I do find it quite irritating, but the perception still exists that a library is a place. The romanticizing of a library as magical portals to other worlds remains. And you can see by these excerpts from the Midnight Library by Matt Haig, it paints almost a mythical, a mystical quality of library staff. It is about these perceptions and the reality I want to reflect on with you this morning. Yes, I find it impossible to lovingly think about cataloging, and honestly, a search in EBSCO has never touched my soul. The time and effort and the funding that goes into the development of online resources and delivery is sometimes not getting the message across. It is similar to the experience of asking a student or a colleague, have they checked the lib guides? And you know by that look of complete bewilderment that they have never used, or in some cases, the existence of them has not even registered. These are not stupid people, but the message is just not getting through. And when we look at library staff and the external perception of who we are, it is as a single entity for most people. They view us all as the same, with the same qualities, the same value. But in some cases, within our profession, we put up boundaries and demarcations internally within our organizations. As a collective body of library staff, we have a reputation of being supportive and kind to others. But when it comes to each other, sometimes this can fall short. This is not meant to be critical, but observational. From someone who has worked in libraries in a variety of environments for over 30 years now. And I want to suggest that we perhaps look at the way that we interact in a different way to in effect, refocus our energy. The energy that we sometimes put into control and hierarchies could be channeled to develop each other 
and our sector so that there is a greater understanding and appreciation that we are a body of professionals that are essential and critical to the development and the improvement of society. All of the energy that goes into micromanaging and control could be refocused and reabsorbed into a collective uplift. We need to start thinking about this now. Things will get better and we, move, we will move back to some kind of normal that we knew. And this is the time to ensure that we are capturing all of the innovation, the collaboration and solutions and the experience so that we can play a more active role in the direction of our destiny. The move to a mostly online world has had impacts and some of the consequences of these have been our relationship with home and the workplace. This change has had impacts that could be positively seen from a break from big commutes to a better balance in work-life situations, or in many cases, the absolute torture of trying to combine all aspects of life into one environment at the same time. Working from home has been a humbling experience and our personal sanctuaries are now gone. This experience of living during a global pandemic is something that not any of us could have prepared for in our lifetime. Library staff and libraries have played a central role in this experience. And it is very easy to understand the gratitude and the praise from library users, when in so many cases they've had no one else to turn to and nowhere else to turn. But the danger in being seen in this light is similar to the way that sometimes nurses are often perceived, as though they are only driven by vocation and not that they are competent medical professionals. This approach can detract from the understanding of our professionalism, the educational requirements, and the skills that are involved working in libraries. I am disheartened to find that some library buildings are still expected to be open during national lockdown. Putting staff at risk is sending a mixed message to library users that the physical library needs to be open to be operational. And when the doors are not open, somehow it is not even though the library is open 24 seven online. It also speaks to a lack of trust of our library users that somehow they would not understand an online library service only. This classification as a library as a service and the library as a building creates problems. A library can exist without a building, but it cannot exist without its people. Putting the safety and well-being of our people first is not a weakness. This is a mixed message that can be confusing and dangerous. We have all experienced a great sense of loss during these dark COVID days, some personal, but also in a professional capacity. This has hit us to the core. This profound experience can impact on how we see ourselves and how we navigate our future. The grounding of who we are, where we fit in and how we fit in can feel like a slippery slope. When I think of the new directions there are and so many possibilities and choices, I am relieved. But I am now encouraging all of us to think about spending some time looking inwards to our colleagues and ourselves, but most importantly to the new entrants of our profession. As someone who has had the privilege to lecture many of them, I can tell you that their enthusiasm, their adeptness and their intellect can only enhance our world. More than any cohort in our profession, they have been the most severely impacted now and with the potential to be limited in their careers. We need to ask ourselves, is it possible that the library, the world of libraries as we know it could change forever? This is time to pause, to reflect in our personal capacities. We are all struggling. We need to think about the way that we're dealing with this. Does our way of coping, extreme control and extreme order is this impacting on other people's stress levels and adding worry to their lives? If you are in a fortunate position to help others, please do so. You may be the only person that will. To foster encouragement and healing, this is the time for creativity. To listen to each other, to step outside these walls of exclusion and to embrace a more inclusive and developmental environment. To understand that those who are dealing with our users at the coalface may have more realistic insight into how they learn, how they access information, and how they navigate the world. This is also a time to look hard at ourselves and what we want to do and develop in our professional and personal lives. 
If I asked you to name all of the things you love, how long would it take for you to name yourself? Too often, we put off career development and new challenges for a variety of reasons. Fear, perhaps, is the most debilitating. Promise me, and yourself, that once we emerge from this COVID world, you will try to do one thing to make your work life better for you. Things will change and we will emerge. Initially, it will come cloaked as relief in knowing that the suffering is over. We will all have changed. Friendships changed, forged or weakened, or weakened by the shared experience of COVID. I have gotten to know, know more of my library colleagues via online exchanges and Zooms than I ever have in person. My attendance at LAI meetings and seminars has increased. Of course, I miss the face-to-face, -face, the coffee before to strategize and the coffee afterwards to debrief. But why can't we have both? We now know without a doubt that most library events do not need to be based in Dublin. As library staff, we have seen a global need for critical thinking and understanding the impact of fake news, and the challenges of ordinary citizens trying to decipher this. Sifting fact from fiction should be everyone's core skill. We have to accept that we have no crystal ball. The future is unknown, and we need to be confident that we can meet these challenges if only we let ourselves. Humans have told stories for as long as we have been on this planet. What is the story that we will tell of our experiences and our recovery for ourselves and our profession and for our people. We need to celebrate what we have done and what we have achieved. Let's have the next chapter of our library story be a good one and let's have a copy in every library. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jane. Um, that was wonderful. Uh, some really great points there, which uh, when you get a chance, you look back through Twitter, you'll see people have been really uh, taken by what you've said and struck myself well, by particular by your comment of the need to a couple of things to um, capture some of the innovations that we've seen in this period and how there can be some positive things in fact I made the point myself that uh, I think we said this the last as well I mean even an event like this is so much more inclusive we've nearly 100 people here today uh, everyone was able to get up at a civilized time and get on rather than I know, I'm sure Alan Carby will forgive me. He's very fond of telling me about the 5 a.m. train journeys from Cork for <laughs> and so on. And, you know, we do need to reflect on that. I think it also gels very well with some of Philip's comments about, you know, the environment and other things we're going to have to consider if we're going to learn and, and, and take the positives from this experience and change the world to be a, a better place. Um, yes, Alan's got that in the chat there. Again. <laughs> about those train journeys. Um, the... Um, uh, the other thing, I guess, as well, which is very close to all of our hearts, particularly those of us very involved in the LAI, is that is your point around the whole the impact on the profession. And, you know, an another senior colleague said to me some time ago that, you know, we were just finding our feet after the recession. And, of course, the awful impact that had on, mm. on, on our profession, particularly our early career people. Um, and now, you know, we have this awesome other massive whammy, which has created so much uncertainty and so on. So that very well made point as well. Uh, we are tight for time, folks, but if there are any uh, quick questions for Jane, uh, we might take them because Jane does have to go to uh, another commitment around, uh, later this morning. So mm. any quick questions, please uh, either pop them in the chat or unmute yourself very quickly, please. So a lot of comments there, Jane, in the chat. Um, but at the moment, I'm not seeing any quick questions. That's no uh, problem. People know where to find me. <laughs> exactly. I was going to say, uh, you'll you know where you'll find Jane. She's on Twitter all the time and she's also <laughs> very accessible. So if you do want to follow up with her. So I think really at this stage, what I might do is just really on everyone's behalf, thank Jane sincerely for a wonderful keynote. I think she hit all the right notes about what we need to think about for the future. And uh, again, as we said at the outset, for all our speakers and presenters today, for just taking the time, Jane, to do this amongst all the various other things you have calling on your time. So thank you so much, Jane. Thank you, Carl. It's great to see everybody.